Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm checking out a 2022 Ford Maverick. Completely new vehicle from Ford. It's a smaller truck. And this is the all-wheel drive Lariat trim level. This vehicle is sitting on 235-65 Falcon tires wrapped around 17-inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rudders in the front and solid rudders in the back. The name of this color is Area 51, which is an interesting name, and it's an interesting color. Looks pretty cool. There's also this decal here on the hood, which kind of looks from a distance, maybe you might think it's carbon fiber or something like that. Uh, but this outer line is just regular black. But this right here, it actually says, if you look very closely, it says first edition, which is pretty neat. Kind of has it repeated throughout the entire decal. So here in the front, all the black that you see here in the front is a matte black. There's the radar adaptive cruise control sensor here, and they even label it, which is kind of neat, right here. Now there is some silver kind of in the grill here. It extends over into each headlight. And the headlights are a an LED reflector for the headlights. So it has three reflectors. The outer two is your low beams and the one inner one is the high beams. And I can check it out on my night video, show you what it looks like going down the road and all that stuff. It also has a, a daytime running light there at the top as well. Turn signals are standard bulbs. Now it also has active grill shutters here in the middle, so it can close up the area where the air goes in for the radiator and condenser coils. And it forces the air around the vehicle uh, when it doesn't need so much cooling. And this helps with aerodynamics for fuel economy as you're driving on the highway, that kind of thing. Taking a look at the profile, it has, with these gloss wheels, the only thing that matches these gl gloss black wheels is the gloss black side mirrors. Everything else is a flat black. So there at the bottom, extends around here to the sides. And at the back there, that's all matte black around the bed. Even the pillar between the, uh, the front and rear glass is also a flat black. Now there is, not on the side, but on the very top, uh, some more gloss black. You have to kind of see it from the top to see the gloss black, but there it is. The handles are body colored, and it also has some decals as well here on the side. The first edition decals at the bottom of the door. Now you'll notice that the bed is not a separate thing from the regular cab. Like a lot of trucks will have a separation right in here. So this one is kind of like a uh, like an SUV type body, just like a, a, a unibody type structure. And uh, so they don't have that separation. So it's not like a regular truck. It's a little bit more uh, on, on the light duty scale of, of the truck range. But it does cover a lot of the uses that most people need in a truck, you know. They just want to have a bed to put some stuff, but it also has the, the back seat and the, the, man, the really nice drive, a smooth ride and drivability that a non-truck has. You know, trucks typically don't have the best ride, uh, but this one is just fantastic on the road. This is what the key looks like, and it's a pretty typical Ford key nowadays. It's big, bulky, and heavy, has the Ford Badging there on the other side. There's a physical key on the inside as well. By pushing that button, you can slide it out. Lock, unlock, remote start, and a panic button. Basically just beeps the horn, flashes the lights. Has a pretty decent horn for a vehicle this size. But this key is designed where you can just keep it in your pocket. It's a full proximity key system. So I could just have it in a bag or in my pocket and I can use the vehicle 100%. To lock the doors, there's a little sensor right here indicated by these little lines. Put my hand over that, whatever, hand, finger, whatever, to lock the doors. It senses the key with me and it allows me to lock the doors. To unlock it, as long as the key's on the outside of the door, 
Uh, you can just put your hand back here. There's a sensor on the inside of the handle. It unlocks the doors, allows you access to the vehicle. There's also a physical key location here on the driver's side only. On the side mirrors is the rear cross traffic alert and blind spot detection system indicator. So they're right there on the side mirrors. The inside of the passenger side door, you can see that it kind of almost goes all the way down, but there's still a little bit of a space there, but it covers up most of the threshold and kind of seals it up fairly well. And the inside of the passenger door here, it has a lot of hard plastics. Now this one's textured right here. It's kind of more smooth, but you can see most of the door is this hard plastic. It feels durable. The only thing that's soft is right here on your armrest, which is not like super duper soft, but it does have it here and here. Um, the rest of the door is basically hard plastics everywhere. But it has a really interesting design because uh, you have the handle here, and this is kind of just open space right in here. Bottle holder right here, as well as here, open space underneath the speaker. It also has this space going this way. So you have that bottle holder here and everything here, but there's some space kind of going that way. So if you need to put an umbrella or something long here in the door, it goes in there quite a ways, you know? And it kind of sw swoops down at the bottom. So if you put something in there, it's kind of like, you know, small, then it might you know, fall out this way. So that way you don't get it lost back there. But it does have that additional space in the door, which is interesting. It has a manually adjusted seat here on the passenger side, but it does have a height adjustment. So you can move the seat forward and back with the lever in the front. And then this lever is to tilt the back, but this one is to raise and lower the seat. So you just kind of like move it up and down and you know, move the seat in the position that you want. But it is a full manual seat. Now the seating surface here, these are heated seats by the way. Uh, the seated surface is what Ford calls Active X seating surface. So I guess it's a, another type of synthetic leather simulated leather that kind of thing but it looks really nice with this combination of brown and black with the stitching there and they're pretty comfortable uh they're not like super duper comfortable but they are pretty you know mediocre for me anyway your preferences might be different And they are a heated seat, a three-stage heated seat, which get quite warm. There's the floor mat. It has the rubber floor mats, but it doesn't... It kind of fits in there snugly, but it doesn't snap in place anywhere. But, you know, it's kind of hard to move around when it fits in so nice. You can see the, uh, the floorboard kind of swoops up quickly. So it goes out flat and then swoops up quickly. So it's kind of like a footrest, I guess. Um, you know, so there there is limitations on your legroom here non-locking glove compartment smooth plastic on the inside pretty standard size and this is all hard touch surfaces here here even the dash hard touch but it does have a non-reflective surface here a little bit of a concave surface which is kind of separating the dash from this area which looks really nice i think The front door has plenty of room getting in and out of the vehicle. So you can see it's plenty of headroom here, just wide open space getting in and out for your legs and everything. The swing of the door is nice. The back door, a uh, little bit smaller here to here, but it still has that wide open space here and around here at the bottom. Now, the swing of the door is pretty dang good. Uh, so it could be a little bit wider since it's a small opening. Um, but it does have a decent amount of room. It's just overall smaller in general, so there's not much you could do about that. So the inside of the back door, very similar style as the front. Uh, it, did not, it does not have that space here to go in, but it does have the bottle holders, has that open handle area, and a soft armrest. The rest of the door is that hard plastic. So the... The back seat is basically a bench seat, has a little bit of contours, but basically basically just a flat seat you can slide in on. 
Uh, there's also this little space right here uh, that you can put some stuff, umbrella or whatever. Kind of catches stuff if it falls out of your pocket too. Latch system for car seats back here and it's basically just in this little area right here so there's no covers or anything like that to remove. There's an armrest with cup holders. Pretty basic. And you have space for a center passenger. And you can see the seat is quite a ways off of the floor. So the floor kind of sinks down in there so your knees are not sticking up in the air so much. And it has the map pockets or these pockets here on the back of both front seats. And you'll notice the driver's seat is further back than this seat. So you can see, I have the driver's seat almost, I think it is all the way back. So you can see the limitations there in the legroom when you do that. Uh, but this one here is more of in a normal position. There is another power inverter, or there's two power inverters, one in the back, one here in the front. This is the 400 watt, 120 volt. It also has a USB-C and USB charge ports there as well. And it is a three prong power inverter outlet. There is a hump there in the center and it's not huge, but it is flat on top, which helps with the center passenger anyway. You can check out my night video. Some of the interior lights are kind of lacking, but it's not too bad. Now there's also uh, some under seat storage and this seat locks down. So you have to pull this strap either on this side or the other side to release it and then it lifts up and then it locks when it goes up. And then you have this open uh, space here as well. It also has this little spot right here for what I think it is for um, Ford accessories, like say you can set something in there and, you know, some kind of, um, you know, things that the Ford will come up with uh, to add to your, your vehicle. So under the seat, it has this plastic big under seat storage tray, basically, and it doesn't appear to be removable or anything. It's just kind of part of the vehicle. And it has more of these, these little these little things right here for putting you know dividers or accessories or whatever Ford decides to uh, sell you as upgrades or accessories for the vehicle so you can put stuff there now I noticed that there's like this if you reach in here there's a spot where it goes up and then kind of over the edge so you could potentially like put stuff in here and then uh, it kind of gets caught up underneath this plastic here because it's not completely sealed So you keep that in mind with small items if you pile it up in there it could potentially kind of Go over the edge of that thing, but I thought that was just one of those things that I happened to notice and the back seat also folds down and most of the space is basically taking up taken up with a speaker there Which is interesting because it hardly has any box for that speaker and then there's an amplifier and there's additional, uh, you know, stuff back here for the vehicle. So there's not a lot of storage space back here, but this is where you'll find the jack and tools for the spare tire hidden back here as well. And the tire is, uh, as you saw in the beginning of the video, in the back or underneath in the back of the vehicle, underneath the vehicle. Kind of normal spot for trucks. Look at the back of the vehicle, starting here at the top, it has that gloss black roof. And then it has this little shark fin antenna with a little, little tiny antenna kind of poking up from that. Uh, there is a third brake light and cargo lights back here. Now these are standard bulbs, which is kind of odd. Uh, the rear glass it has this little window, sli power sliding window, but the rear glass is not, it's not heated. So there's no heated rear glass, which is kind of surprising to me. So this one has the bed cover, which we'll pull back in just a minute. Now the tail lights are a combination of LED and standard bulbs. I'll show you this in the night video, what they look like. Uh, they're very impressive until you realize that some of them are, uh, you know, the, the, the LED portion is impressive, but the rest of it's kind of you know mediocre for its year anyway, for being a, a newly designed vehicle in 2022. The backup camera is in a really good position in the very center, it's right, and it's integrated well right here at the bottom of the badge. 
It's the very center, fairly high position, but it's in the center of the vehicle, so you can see uh, behind you, but also when you're backing up to a trailer, uh, it's right in, right above the trailer hitch, right there, so you can see and line up to that easily. Now this one has the four-way connector for the trailer hitch, so it's right here. Uh, so you need an adapter if you need the uh, to use the the other you know seven-way or whatever. There's parking sensors across the back. They're integrated here into the bumper. Uh, but check out the tag tags there on well, off to the side, which is kind of different, I guess. And this particular, it just kind of this style. It kind of looks a little little strange to me, but it doesn't look bad or anything. Now the tailgate locks when you lock the vehicle. It also has the ability to make it to where it just locks. You know, you can have it lock separately with that uh, uh, manual lock here. And when you open it up, the tailgate's not that heavy, but it's not assisted. It's not like, you know, dampened or anything like that. And it is a sprayed bed liner. So that you can see the spray and bed liner is also here on the tailgate as well. In addition to the, the tie downs in the bed, it also has tie downs here on the tailgate. So if you need to have, um, you know, if you're loading something and you're leaving the tailgate down and it's, it's kind of extending out, this is a really good uh, addition to have a, a durable fixed tie down to secure the items back here as well. And supposedly you can use it as a bottle holder, a, a bottle opener as well. And there's one on both sides. You can reposition the cable to go in that higher position there um, from its normal place. And this is to basically uh, accommodate for some of the shortcomings of the bed. So this gives you another platform for say plywood or whatever that's up on the wheel wells and you can kind of like, you know, make it more level by lifting up the tailgate and then kind of resting on that. Uh, it's kind of cheesy. It's a little bit, you know, of a, it's just a, you're just coping with the, the in, in, inadequacies of the bed, you know? So it's kind of like, you know, me personally, I would not want to do this kind of stuff because it has this huge airspace underneath the plywood or, or sheetrock, or whatever you're trying to put under here. And, um, you know, I'd rather things be flat in the bed. So, but this is one of the things that, you know, they came up with to try to accommodate for those shortcomings. The length of the bed, the practical length of the bed, is right at almost 55 inches here. Now to the end of the tailgate is 79 inches. So six foot, seven inches to the end of the tailgate. Now between the wheel wells on the bottom, and that's a crucial area right here for laying uh, stuff back here, is 42 and a half inches. So it's not quite wide enough for, it's a three foot six inches. So if it was only four inches wider, you'd be able to lay a um, sheet of plywood in here, but they just don't have that extra two inches on each side, apparently, or they would have done it because that's like a key thing. <clears throat> but up here on the top, they flattened out these wheel wells in order to have a, um, it's got four, 52 and a half, so that's four foot, four inches. So if you were to lay plywood up here, a four foot plywood, it would only, yeah, it would only kind of like be over the edge just a few inches here and then most of the middle is going to be sagging so that's something to consider now it does have this place for a board to go in here as well so it's supposed to, it's supposed to help with uh supporting that sag apparently and of course you can lift the uh the tailgate up like i showed you uh to have a somewhat of a level surface or a surface to put some uh plywood or sheetrock or whatever you want to put back here now of course it requires some modification like adding wood uh, lifting up the tailgate, stuff like that. Now the height of the bed, that's another factor here, is right at 20 inches or so. Yeah, right about 20 inches. 
So it's a usable bed. It's not quite as good as the, the Honda Ridgeline, in my opinion, as far as the dimensions. And also the fact that this is not a composite bed. This is a steel bed with a spray and bed liner. So this can be dented and stuff like that. Uh, same thing with the tailgate here, but it does have this this tie down on the tailgate, which I think that's a fantastic idea. So you can tie things down here. And of course you have your fixed tie downs here and in the back, uh, but then you also have these cleats on the side in which you can, you know, get a an upper uh, tie down, you know, anywhere along that rail. When you flip the cover back, you notice that it does have a fixed tie down right here in the front on the bottom. There's also this cleat that can slide across this rail to give you different, give you uh, different angles and uh, for uh, an additional tie down there at the top. The same thing on the other side as well. Now there's also places for like a board or something that, that can go across here or here, uh, depending on your, uh, your needs in the moment. Uh, the inner portion here between the wheel wells is not quite big enough to lay a, fl a sheet of plywood down um, But you can put it on top of these uh, Wheel wells here and then reposition the tailgate in order to accommodate that now That's going to limit you know how much you can stack up or whatever since it's not flush on the on the bed But it does give you the ability uh, to do that as well here in the back. There's fixed tie downs in the top and there at the bottom, in addition to that sliding cleat, there's also a power inverter, 400 watt max, 120 volt, three prong, similar, similar to what you'd find in your house, three prong, or exactly what you'd find in your house. There's also a bed light here, and it kind of turns on when you open the, the tailgate, but uh, you can you know keep it on by pushing that button right there. There's also bed lights there like you've, you've seen before. You can check out my night video so you can see what it looks like at night. Here on the right side, uh, it has this little storage compartment and opens up like so. It's not locking or anything. Now it has, you, has the ability to just kind of like put some stuff here or you can slide this little bottom out and then it goes down in there quite a ways. So it's a larger pocket below. So you can utilize a, you know, that space for a larger item or you can put smaller items in the bottom uh, and then put this here and then put some more items there type of thing. Now you notice these little covers right here. It says flex bed, 12 volt DC. Now there's one on this side and there's one on this side. And basically what that is, is it just basically, it has a wire with a connector, which gives you access to 12 volt. So certain accessories or different things uh, that Ford offers can plug into this. And then that way you have, you know, instant power to those accessories, um, utilizing these little spots here. The fuel door is here on the driver's side and it is non-locking and a capless design. Has a seal around the outside here. You can also use a combination lock here to enter the vehicle when you don't have the key on you. Starting it up, as long as you have the key inside the vehicle with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, in a cup holder, whatever. Just press and hold the brake and push this button to start it up. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now the floor mat here on this side does have snap tie downs. So this, or not tie downs, but snap down places there. So it keeps the floor mat in place, keeps it, keeping it from sliding around on you, even though it is form fitted to the vehicle. There's the accelerator and brake pedal, nice big foot rest here on the left side. So under the hood, when you open the hood, it has this interesting latch. For one thing, uh, here it is right here. When you pull it, when you have the door shut, it kind of covers it up a little bit so you can't accidentally pull it. But if you did, it, you have to pull it twice. And what happens is when you pull it twice, it completely releases the hood. So that way there's no catch underneath the hood that you have to release now. So raising the hood now, there's no catch or anything. You just grab it and lift it up. And it feels so light. 
It's very, very light. It's aluminum hood, most likely, and it just doesn't feel as heavy as it should be. Now, it does require a prop to hold it up. So here's the prop here, and it swings up and goes right to where the arrow's aiming. You can see there's no insulation under the hood. There is some seals across the front and the back, though. This helps out with airflow and noise to some degree. The battery is here, easy to get to. And there's the engine. There is a insulated firewall, however. There's also some uh, heat shielding there at the very bottom. This is a turbocharged four-cylinder engine, so the turbo is back there, kind of gets a little hot. So they have that heat shielding back there. So this is a four-cylinder engine. It's a 2.0 liter four-cylinder engine. And you'll notice that the, the orientation is this way. So this is the front of the engine, that's the rear. Transmission's down that way. So it's oriented as a front-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, this is like the Honda Ridgeline, and which is a truck, but it's different than a normal truck. It's more like an SUV with a bed is basically what's going on here, which is good uh, for a lot of, in a lot of ways. So, you know, you know, it helps out with ride quality. It gives you, um, you know, you know, some of the off-road capabilities are good, you know, or on-road and you have some uh, snow or ice. Some people can drive better with a front-wheel drive than a rear-wheel drive, that kind of thing. All the weight, the majority of the weight typically is over the drive wheels, which is good. So you have the benefits of the front-wheel drive system, but you also have the benefits of, the, of a truck as well. So this is a 2.0 liter four-cylinder engine and the transmission is a 10-speed, 10 10-speed 10 automatic transmission. It's a really, really good shifting. You don't, it doesn't feel like you have to go through all those 10 gears. You just don't really notice it. It's just a really good uh, system that um, that works really well and handles the, the power and, um, and the shifting and all that stuff just kind of seamlessly. It works really good. Very impressed with it. Here's the inside of the driver's side door, and it's basically just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. So there's the door lock controls. Power windows are one touch up and down. So we can push this down. What's interesting is it has an acoustic windshield, but it does not have the acoustic laminated um, side windows. So you think that if they would have the acoustic windshield, they would have these as well, but these are just regular side windows here. But it is a one touch up and down for the front and the back. And the back windows go all the way down, unlike some vehicles. Side mirrors are adjusted, are adjusted here. You just pick a side and it illuminates. And you adjust it with that little pad there. Now the driver's seat is a power seat, unlike the passenger side, which is manual. And it has the ability to go up and down, forward and back, tilt, and a two-way lumbar adjustment as well. And these are heated seats, three-stage heated seats. To the left of the steering column, uh, there's a few buttons here. So you got the bed light. So this is the cargo light here. So this shines from the cab into the bed, but it also uh, turns on the little side light there in the back as well, that little LED side light. Headlight switches here. So it has off, parking light, light automatic headlights, and that, that's not the same thing as automatic high beams. That's automatic headlights and then headlights on manually. And then the dimmer switch for your interior gauges. There's also a tilt and a telescoping steering column as well. I'm sitting in the driver's seat checking it out and I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down. I'm six feet tall to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. So on the sides where my knees are, Plenty of room. I mean, it's cut pretty much wide open there uh, for the most part. There's no big, tall, you know, center console to get in the way or anything. My knee can pass right over that fairly well. Now, with it all the way back as it is, uh, it still feels like it feels like if I was any taller, there might be an issue, but it's basically fine for me, that kind of thing. Um, there's the footrest there, my foot kind of, the angle is good for my leg, and I can press and all, all the way down the, the brake pedal, that kind of thing. So, uh, as far as room, for me, it's fine when it's all the way back. 
So if you're six one, six two, and you're getting taller than that, then you definitely want to spend a little bit extra time in this vehicle. Make sure it's gonna have enough room for you when you're driving, especially if you're gonna have passengers behind you. You're really gonna cut into their leg space back there uh, if you're really tall because you have to put all the seat all the way back, that kind of thing. Now it does have a leather wrapped steering wheel. It doesn't have the uh, simulated leather like the seats. And it's very comfortable. It's, it's kind of soft to the touch and kind of thick here at the bottom. Has some accents and everything. Bolsters here for your hands. But it's just a very, very comfortable. Ford does a good job with their steering wheels, and this is uh this is this is great, just like a lot of the other ones. On the left side of the steering wheel, there's quite a few controls here, and they're fairly easy to use. So here at the top, so you can see it's kind of divided the top portion from the bottom portion. So there's the volume for the radio, there's to mute the radio, and we'll continue on with the section because it's related. And then these buttons here are to change through the tracks on your radio or um, whatever you're playing, next radio station, whatever. Uh, they also serve to for your Bluetooth system, so you can answer a call or hang up here and then voice recognition button is there. So these lower buttons are kind of connected. This part up here is the cruise control. So you can turn it on using that button. Set it by pushing this up or down, this knob here. Resume by pushing that knob in. And cancel, pushing that button. So it's pretty basic there. Now it is an adaptive cruise control system and you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you by pushing that button. And it cycles the distance and you just rest on the one that you want. Also, the lane keep assist, you can turn that on or off, and if it sees the lines on the road, it'll help keep your vehicle by turning the steering wheel in the center lane. Now, you still have to keep your hands on the wheel, but it's just kind of help makes it a little bit easier. And it, it works fairly well. Here on the right side, this menu button, this OK, these arrows, and this back button, all these uh, correspond with the screen the screen here between the gauges. We'll get to that in just a minute Here on the right side is the windshield wiper controls here on the left side is your turn signal Also your headlight dimmer switch, but here on the end this little button right here you can see it's the road departure uh, Warning system here or road departure mitigation system so you can turn that on or off So here's the gauges. You can see it has traditional gauges on the left and right. So the left side is the, you can see the tachometer or RPM gauge. Below that is the engine coolant temperature. On the right side, you have a traditional speedometer. Below that is the fuel gauge. It has a little arrow next to the pump there showing you that the fuel door is on the driver's side. In the center is a big screen. It shows you the outside temperature which direction the vehicle is facing, digital compass. Right now we're facing southwest. Um, it shows you the status of the, the uh, lane keep assist system. So it'll actually turn green when it can see the lines on the road, that kind of thing. Then we have some information there, digital speedometer, the status of our adaptive cruise control here. Uh, also the stop start feature, the status of that range to empty so right now we got 85 miles 86 miles to empty and then it shows what gear you're in here so using these buttons here on the right side here are these top buttons right here uh, we can scroll through and get some more information first I'm gonna go just kind of scroll up and down so you can see what happens in this like part of a menu system there at the top and it gives you different views and a lot of these are some of these you can reset, like your trip and that, that kind of thing. So it's showing you what, you what your radio is doing. The comm screen is just basically a blank screen. If you don't want anything there, you don't have to have anything. That kind of, that kind of stuff. And these trip one, trip two, reset those. They give you a time, a distance, average fuel economy, that kind of thing. Now when we push the menu button, it pops up this. And we can go in and we can select screens. We can go specifically to audio, phone, we can go into settings, uh, that kind of thing. So we can go into settings, you can see we can, here's the different things we can do there. And then when we go to display setup, 
uh, we can change to kilometers per hour in here and we can choose the ones that we want so uh, tire pressure if we want PSI or if you want to change that we want Celsius instead of Fahrenheit miles per gallon you know these different things here we can also select the screens that we want you notice we s scrolled through those screens well you can change those I'm not sure why you can't just have all of them but you do have a limited amount you can check um, so seat belt status that kind of st stuff so uh, these are the ones that I have checked there and you can uncheck one and check another one if you want but for some reason you're limited on how many you can have There is a little storage pocket here at the top, so you could put some stuff in there. Just kind of quick access type things. Same thing right in here. It's kind of like a little pocket right in there. And then it has this little rubber portion at the bottom that you can take out, clean, and put it back in. And it has this little lip on the edge. So let's say you have something in there. And this kind of snaps in place. But let's say you have something in there and then you floor it. It doesn't kind of slide out so easily. It has a little lip on, little edge lip there. So here's the touch screen and it's a very basic system in this particular vehicle and it has the outside temperature, digital clock, the status of my phone. I have a phone that's charging on the wireless charger, that's what this is about. It has a, a home screen, we'll go ahead and go to the home screen, we can start there. And then it has these buttons at the bottom. and. Um, so basically right now it's kind of a split between the digital compass, whatever's going on with the phone, which I had the phone turn off so it doesn't pop up there. And then I have the, uh, you know, whatever the radio is doing, like the audio portion of the radio is here. So you can go specifically to the audio here, specifically to the phone here, you go to the apps, and it does have the Apple CarPlay Android Auto capabilities. And then there's your settings. So it's very basic as far as, you know, what's... Uh, you know what's available so let's go back to the audio so you can see what the sources are AM FM satellite radio and Bluetooth so it's pretty straightforward has a traditional volume knob tune through the stations uh, you can also change through tracks here and you can also turn off the screen if you just don't want the screen on. Um, so like say, don't want the stuff on the screen, now it's showing a clock. But if you want the screen off, press it again, like that. And then now the screen's completely off. So the first press will go to the clock, the second press turns it off. I also have a, a mute button there as well. Climate controls here. So there's a driver and passenger, it's a dual zone climate control. Uh, you can sync them, they're basically default synced unless you push the dual button and then now you can set that one separately. So the driver and passenger will have separate temperatures here. And it has a um, front, two front defrosts. One is a regular front defrost, the other one is a max front defrost but it has no rear defrost but it does have heated side mirrors which you can turn on separately recirculate the air where you want the air to blow max AC fan speed heated steering wheel and heated seats heated steering wheel is just on or off heated seats is high medium and low and then off driver and passenger now it has an automatic function so you can set the temperature and automatically adjust the fan speed and where the air blows and all that stuff and it has three different settings so low high medium and high and basically so it so that way if you don't want the fans blowing so much sometimes you put on automatic it's just like blasting the the fan so much you have some control over you know limiting how fast the the air comes out of the fan you know so that's good I, I like that so it's not constantly you know changing all the time now it will adapt to its needs but it just kind of puts a cap on how much air it's blowing in your face type thing so down here this is for the 
power window, the rear power window. There's a 12 volt power supply. There's also a USB and USB C charge ports down here. And then there is a storage area. Now this is a pretty interesting one because this is you have this um, charge port here. It's a wireless charge port for your cell phone. You can also put your cell phone here, kind of standing up. Now it's not a charge position, but it is another position you can put a cell phone. It could be for the passenger or whatever. And then there's an, this other place back here, which is kind of neat. Um, of course, it's not really necessarily made for a phone, but you know it has another spot back there for. Let me turn the brightness up a little bit so you can see in there for whatever you want. Uh, there's also, I don't know if you notice here, uh, let's say you had your phone plugged in and then the wire sticking out the bottom of it, well it has, it accommodates for that right here, so that way your wire, the wire can, can be, you know, channeled out, so when you're standing your phone up, it has a, a little place to accommodate for that wire. Um, but of course, you know, the wireless charger is, in this particular vehicle, is good as well. There's the cup holders, and they're in that side position, which is nice. And then, um, they do have the articulating arms, so it kind of helps out with bottles, you know, moved around so much. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a rubberized bottom surface. Little storage area there as well, and here which is nice. Lots of little tiny places to put stuff. Here's the shifter and it has a dial instead of like a, a big shifter sticking up and that helps out with kind of getting things out of the way. Just kind of cleaning this up. So if I, have, have, if I had like a big shifter in the way, it kind of helps. It, it would kind of hinder your ability to get to all these little pockets and stuff. So kind of cleans it up a little bit and it's very simple. You just turn the knob. So in this case, like I have my foot on the brake. If I didn't have my foot on the brake and I just try to turn this knob, it's not going to turn. I have to hold the brake, put it in reverse. Two things will happen when I put it in reverse. Uh, the backup camera will pop up here. It does have active guidelines as well. As I turn the steering wheel, you'll see the lines move. Uh, but it also turns on the parking sensors. You can see them there as well as right here. So if I get close to something, not only will it beep at me, but also give me a little visual reference on where that item, where that object is that I might be hitting. So it kind of gives me an idea of where to look uh, when I'm backing up. Okay, so continuing on, there's neutral and then there's drive. You also have a low range. So if you need to go, if you're going downhill and you need some engine braking, uh, you can activate that low range. Um, the default would just be the normal drive drive mode there. It has electronic parking brake here. You lift it up to engage it, and it engages the rear wheels. To disengage it, you push it. You push the brake and then push it down, and it'll release it. There's some buttons here. Um, so this is the first button I press when I get in the vehicle. This is to turn off the auto stop start stop feature and this will keep the vehicle from turning off the engine when you come to a complete stop. I'm not really a fan of that, especially in this vehicle because, you know, I forgot to turn it off one time and I came to a complete stop at a stop light and there was this truck waiting for me, like a big heavy duty truck, and, um, I, you know, I, as soon as I stopped to turn the engine off, and then, you know, I was pushing the accelerator and it just like wouldn't go anywhere. It had to restart the engine and all that stuff, so the guy's sitting there waiting on me, thinking I'm not going, and then he started to go, and I'm over there trying to press the accelerator to go, and it finally kicks in and goes, and then as soon as he starts rolling, then I fly out there in front of him. So it's one of those things where it's like, you know, you want to have control over the vehicle. You don't want the vehicle to be turning off and stuff. So, you know, I just try to remember to turn that off every time I get get start the vehicle. You'd have to, unfortunately, have to turn it off manually every single time you get in the vehicle. It also has the brake hold feature. Luckily, this is the feature that you can turn on or off. Um, it'll kind of, you know, you have to turn it on when you get in the vehicle because it actually holds the brake for you when you come to a complete stop until you push the accelerator. So that's one of the other things where it's, you know, doing stuff without you, like, without you holding the brake, it holds the brake for you type thing. So if you like that feature, you can turn it on. 
Uh, traction control, you can turn that off. Default will be on, so it lets you know up here whether it's on or off. This is if you need to spin tires, uh, that kind of thing. If you're getting stuck or about to get stuck, if you're in some kind of situation where you need to spin tires, you can turn off traction control because it will try to avoid that. And then this is the drive mode. So when we push this, um, it kind of pulls up the screen here. There's normal, tow and haul, slippery, eco, sport, and then it goes back to normal. So those are the different drive modes that you can utilize on the vehicle when needed. Here's the armrest, very soft, pretty soft. I mean, it bottoms out after about a half inch or so, but it's it's pretty soft armrest and you, useful. When you lift it up, it kind of doesn't slap back down on you like some vehicles. Kind of has a little bit of a spring load there. Kind of holds it up. And you have this compartment here, and there's no light. It's kind of like a <laughs> kind of a spoiler for the night video, but there's no light in here, and uh, but it is pretty good size. And has a felt lining at the bottom, just kind of a junk drawer of the vehicle, that kind of thing. Rear view mirror, it has a manual day and night mode, so you just kind of flip it pretty, pretty retro there, um, which is fine. And then it has some tap lights up here. These are LED interior lights. You can turn on all the interior lights by pressing here to the left. This little toggle switch all the way to the right is to turn off the ability for the door, doors to activate the interior lights. Let's say you got a baby sleeping or whatever. Uh, you don't want the interior lights to turn on when you open the door, you can turn that off. Or in the center position where it's flush, it actually does turn the interior lights on when you open the door. Uh, this is for the sunroof, we'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, the visor has a little clip right here. It has a mirror with lights. It also has the ability to extend out on a metal rod here. And a clip on the other side as well. Same thing on the other side. So the sunroof has a shade that covers 100% of the light. So the not, no light coming in at all. We can go ahead and open that up manually and use the button here to open it up. So let's kind of tilt it up. Or actually, let's move it back first. Push it again, it goes a little bit further back. Push it forward. And now let's tilt it up. Like so. Just kind of tilts up, lets a little bit of airflow in. Close it. Now we can close the shade. Take a look at the visibility there in the back. Um, it does have a little bit of a pillar there to obscure your view a little bit. Small window in the back. But overall, I haven't really had a problem with visibility. I can see pretty decent around. Now I'm accustomed to vehicles that have severe blind spots. This one, of course, you know, not the best in the world, but so far I haven't really had an issue with it. Especially considering as rear cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system, um, parking sensors, camera system, all that stuff to help you out. Uh, it is, um, you know, it's not really an issue, but you know, just to give you an idea, if you need that visibility, it is a little bit limited, especially the headrests are in the way and it has the small glass back there. And while we're looking back there, let's go ahead and open up that sliding rear glass. You can see what that does. Kind of goes pretty quick, pretty neat. Alright, so there you have it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.